All right, we're going to be solving some exponential equations and inequalities. We're going to kind of uh, expand a little bit on the last uh, unit, kind of, and we're going to see at least one example where we expand on what we learned last lesson. So let's dive in. We're going to start with something that's probably reviewed from Algebra 1, almost certainly, but if it's not, here you go. All right, so property of equality for exponential function says, first of all, and this is, this is more like formal talk, right? B has got to be greater than 1, otherwise otherwise it's, it's whatever. It can't be 1 because if it's a fraction, then different things are happening. You've got exponential decay, and so it changes the ball game. So as long as B is something that's greater than, greater than not equal to 1, then we can set the exponents equal, right? Is, is basically what this says. So this is true if and only if x equals y. So b to the x equals b to the y if x equals y. So if the bases are the same, the exponents are equal. We've got this kind of like mini example right here. If five to the x equals five to the eighth, then x has to equal eight because the bases match. So the exponents have to be equal. Easy peasy, right? So let's do an example actually using this. So we're going to solve these equations. Now you look at this and you're like, wait a minute, those bases don't match. Two is not eight. And we don't even have any examples that are that are straight up already ready to go. This is not algebra one. We're jumping in with the with the the big guns from the beginning because we're algebra two now. We got this. So the bases don't match. So we can't use that property yet. We need to be able to get the bases to match. And we're going to use properties of exponents to do that, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So this one it has a base of two. Can we turn eight into two? Well, we can, right? Because eight equals, let me get a different color here. So eight is, is two to the something, right? Two to the something equals eight. Two cubed is eight. So we can turn this eight into two cubed. And so that would turn this equation into two to the X equals two cubed cubed, right? Because eight is two cubed. So that's this one. And then we still have this cubed. Now we've got a power to a power. What do we do with those? We multiply them, right? So three times three is nine. So this would turn into two to the X equals two to the nine. Now the bases match. So we just set the X when it's equal to each other. So in this first example, X equals nine. I almost said three. I almost did the square root of it for some random reason. I don't know. I do new. So let's take a look at this one. So same idea. So can we turn <coughs> can we turn either one of these into the other one? Well, can we so we're gonna we what you're you're gonna do as as you may kind of already kind of seen what's going on here. If we can take and turn the bigger one into the smaller one, that's what we want to do. So same idea. Three squared, because three times three is nine. So we could turn this nine into three squared, right? So let's turn this into three squared to the, now you're gonna notice something here, I hope you do, to the two X minus one equals three to the six X. Now we've got like bases, we've got a power to a power. What do we do with these? We multiply them. Now it's really important here that this is two times all of this. So what does that mean we're going to have to do? We're going to have to distribute. So we're going to have to distribute this two here, right? So this turns into three to the two times two X, which is four X, and then two times negative one, which is negative two equals three to the six X, right? So now we got like bases to exponents, so we can just set their exponents equal. So we can turn this into 4x minus 2 equals 6x, right? Now we've got something we can solve, easy peasy. So let's take and move this 4x over there. So let's subtract the 4x from this side. We do that, we've got to do that to this side. So it cancels over here, which is what we want, of course. This is just simple solving equations with algebra, we've done this for a long time now, right? So 2x, I'm gonna get rid of that two by dividing two on both sides. So x ends up equaling negative one in this problem. 
Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's hit the next thing. So now we got a big old word problem. Oh no, words. Quick, pause the video, copy the problem down. Oh no, it's gonna be fine. You're gonna live. It'll be all right. Kristen starts an experiment with $7,500. 7,500. That's not dollars. 7,500 bacteria cells. Bacteria. After. Whew, thought I was going to sneeze there. Still might. We'll see. Put your bets in the comments below. Is he going to sneeze? Is he not going to? After four hours, there are 25,000. Write an exponential function that could be used to model the number of bacteria after X hours. If the number of bacteria changes at the same rate, or at a, you might see a problem said at a constant rate, same thing, right? Uh, how many bacteria cells can be ex expected in the sample after 12 hours. So this is kind of a two-part problem. We want to write an equation. So in order to solve this problem, we're going to use things that we've learned in the past, possibly from algebra one and also possibly from last lesson, right? So this is an exponential growth function, right? It's exponential growth. So we're going to use the parent function y equals a b to the x. Now you may know from past experience or or intuition or whatever kind of uh where what these variables are in here like a is going to be your starting amount b is that rate or the rate plus one actually but and then the x is going to be the exponent right it's going to be that increaser and usually it's t for time right and so we're going to kind of use that information that we we know from the past to stick these things in the right places i may go ahead and label this so this is the generic form of exponential growth function the y is the final amount final the a is the initial amount i have this all this information in my um video from algebra one that talks about this the b is the rate plus one technically but we're going to get just kind of in generic form here and this is time how much time passes as as this increases right so that is is how this this equation works <clears throat> in this type of problem so let's start plugging things in and see if we can get what we need we, is we need a number here and a number there to answer this uh part where it says uh where it is where, where it is write an exponential function so we need a and b to be numbers y and the x can stay generic for our exponential function then when we actually plug something into it we'll do that in a minute so Let's write down what we have. So we started with 7,500. So that's A, 7,500. And then after four hours, so that's the time, four hours, there are 25,000. So that's 25,000. So what are we missing from our generic thing? We're missing that B. So we need to figure out what B is in order to solve and write an exponential function. So let's solve this equation for B. So we need to divide both sides by 7,500 to kind of isolate our B to the fourth, right? You could take the fourth root of everything first, but that's that's it's not generally what we want to do. But you could technically. 500. We might could do this in our head. But let's grab our calculator instead. Wow, poet didn't know it. 25,000 <laughs> divided by 7,500 equals 3 and 1 third. 3.3 repeating equals B to the fourth. How do we get rid of that fourth? We could raise it to the to the one fourth, right? If we used uh, rational exponents, or we could we could think about it as taking the fourth root. You could think about that either way. I don't know why we changed our primary and secondary colors, but we did. So here we go, the fourth root. Now this is this is a a bit of a trick, a word to the wise. So instead of in your calculator, instead of retyping this and get some rounding errors and and all of those things. 
do if you will just take this and you will leave it there and then we go the fourth root which on this calculator you go here and you do fourth and then inside here all the calculators that I recommend for this class, they will have somewhere an answer button. It may be a, labeled ANS or, or the whole word answer, but it'll have that in there and we can use that to put whatever the, mo the, pre the most recent answer was in there. So on this calculator, we hit shift and then ANS. So that's the fourth root of this, right? So it's gonna keep us from having some weird rounding errors. And then there is our answer. Looks good, right? So B in this case is approximately equal to, is approximately equal to one point something, 1.351, 1.351. So that equation that we are looking for would be Y equals 7,500. That's the starting amount times 1.351 to the x, right? So that is the answer to kind of part A of this problem. Now, for how many bacteria, bacteria cells can be expected in the sample after 12 hours? So now we need to plug this 12 in for our time variable, which is x in this problem. So we're, gonna, we're going to do that. So we're going to find the amount after 500 times 1.351 to the 12. Now, we can keep if we keep stuff in our calculator, we can do that same thing kind of of if we just if we just hit to the or if you it would do the same thing if you hit times or divide or minus, then you see it automatically uses that a and s variable which is holding this. So this to the 12th equals that and then times 7,500. You're probably already using all those tools, tips and tricks, but when I think about it, I like to I like to uh, so, let you know that those are, are there. So 27,778. So why the amount is approximately equal to 27,778 cells. Word problems have units, don't forget. Great. Let's look at the next thing. So you have almost certainly seen this before in Algebra 1. This is the compound interest formula. It looks a lot like that generic egg, um, compound gro or exponential growth function. It looks a lot like that with a little bit of tweakages. And a lot of it is exactly the same as what we've seen. So A is the final amount, just, just like on that generic exponential one, exponential growth one. P is also the initial amount. Now in this formula, it has a different word. It's called, the word is principle, principle. Oh, I think that spelling is the right one in this context. I don't know. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, who knows? Principle, which is still the initial amount, that starting amount, initial amount invested or, or whatever. Now, the one is, is one. Oh, wow. Okay. R is the rate. Rate. And then N, both instances of N, is the number of times, times compounded. It was compounded annually. Right. So if it said it's compounded monthly, then N would be 12. If it was daily, it'd be 365, et cetera. The only one that's that's a little bit weird that I like to mention that, that's kind of a little bit like, wait, what is that? Is if it says semi-annually, then it means two, right? And so that's the only one that's kind of weird. T is the time. And to use this formula, it is specifically the time in years, right? So the time in years. Some formulas, because of the way they work, the units matter. Sometimes they don't. In this context, it does matter. That T is the time in years. Let's do an example using this formula. An investment account pays 4.2 annual interest compounded monthly if $2,500 is invested in this account 
what would be the balance after 15 years? All right, so we need to find our variables. So we've got A and we've got P, what? P, R, T, and N, right? Those are our variables. So the amount at the end is what we are looking for. So we're going to put equals question mark because we're going we're gonna to find that out in the end. Now, the principal is the initial amount invested. In this problem, it's $2,500. Dollars interest rate interest rate is 4.2 percent in order to do math with a percent we need that to be a decimal so we're going to move that decimal over twice once twice because that's how we convert to a decimal so 0 0.042 don't forget that when there's an empty space there's an extra zero there right Time is 15 years. It's already in years, so we're not worried about that. Compounded monthly, so N equals 12. So we're going to plug it into our formula, A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the N times T. All right, so A is, is unknown, so he's going to just stay an A. The P is 2,500. You notice I don't put units on there. When we put units inside of an equation, it gets all messy and confusing. So we just put the number. I also don't put commas either for the same reason because it gets just messy and ugly and confusing and we don't like messy, ugly, confusing. Right? So over R, which is 0 0.042, which is an awful, awful instant interest rate, by the way. That's, that's a... Barely keeping up with inflation. Currently not keeping up at all, but in normal circumstances, that's like a barely keeping up with inflation interest rate. Depending on your purposes for this account, you may want to look at a different account. N is 12 time and then 15 for the T. All right, so now we're just going to kind of work this out as we go. So let's go ahead and get uh, things for this and this. We're going to simplify both of those equals... 2,500 times, so 0 0.042 divided by 12 equals that, plus 1 equals that, 1.0035, 1 1.0035, 1 to the 12 times 15, which is 600 and something, right? 12 times 15 equals... Well, I was way off in what I was thinking. I don't know. 180. 180. It's because I didn't stop to think about it. Maybe. I don't know. We'll go with that. Something. I was distracted by the ding that I forgot to turn off, apparently. So, now, we're going to take this number, and we're going to raise it to most of your... Did you see what I did there? Most of your calculators uh, that I... Most of the calculators, well... Several of the calculators that I recommend will do exactly what I just did. And you can kind of go up and grab a number and then push enter and it'll stick it down there. So that's not that A and S. It's just another number that I grabbed previously. I'm going to raise that to the 180 equals that. And then we're going to multiply that times 2,500 equals 46,088 dollars and 87 cents. $46,488.87. Yes. Word problems have units. Don't forget. There we go. That's easy peasy. We just got uh, one more thing and one more example, and then we are through. We're not, we're not, it doesn't look like we're going to be pushing the 30 minute mark today. Yay. Great. So. Property of inequality for exponential, uh, pop, the poverty, the poverty of, of inequality, <laughs> inequality is the new word. This slide looks a lot like that other slide, but now it says inequality and we've got these greater than symbols. This would also be applicable. You could write this in the reverse for less than as well. So B has got to be greater than one, just like, like we saw before. B to the X is greater than B to the Y if and only if X is greater than Y. This would also be true in the reverse, right? So if it said less than, that would be true as well. Let's do us an example. 
solve this guy, right? So I like this example. This is a sneaky example because it uh, sneaks in a couple of things, which is really, really helpful. Um, because first of all, we're trying, we need these bases to match just like we did before. 16 is not eight, right? We need it to equal that. So our normal, if we're following just kind of the plan that we went with on the last, the last ones would be to trying to take and turn 16 into eight to the something. Well, eight squared is 64. Eight squared equals 64, which is too much. So we can't do that. So what is the conundrum? What are we going to do? How are we going to make it work? Well, we've got to change them both. So we could go down and turn earn eight into something else. You might be tempted to say four. Well, four squared is 16. So we got to go even lower with this eight number. So what else could we do? Well, we could turn it into two to the something, right? Because two cubed equals eight. So that could work. Can we turn 16 into two to the something? Two to the something equals 16. Well, we've seen, I think already in this video that two to the fourth is 16. Two times two times two times two is 16. So we're going to change them both this time. So we're going to turn this one into two to the fourth to the 2x minus 3. Now you should hopefully be thinking, oh, we're going to have to distribute. Make sure that's jumping to your brain because that's that's an easy way to mis make a mistake and just put 8x minus 3 when we get down in here. And and that's yeah, not going to be right because you've got to distribute that to both of them. Bring down our less than and turn this into 2 cubed. Great. Nice, nice, nice. So yeah, just like I said, we got to distribute this right here. And we can go ahead and jump straight into just killing the bases, right? And set the set because they're already the bases are already already equal. So let's go ahead and set the ex, uh, uh, exponents equal as well. Well, less than, not equal, but same difference, kind of practically speaking. Not, but like how we do the problem is the same thing. So eight x minus twelve, because four times two x is eight x. Four times negative three is negative twelve. So less than three. Right, so we just set the two x ones equal. That's where the twos went. So if you were, if we were in class and the student was like, "Where did the twos go?" There's the answer to your question. You're welcome. Glad to be of service. I am pushing my volume. Hopefully, I'm not screaming in your ears. All right, so let's solve for x. That's easy peasy. Now we've been doing this. this is the two step equation. You've probably been doing this since middle school. So plus twelve. Plus 12, that cancels, leaving us with 8x is less than 5. Going to solve for 8, uh, get rid of the 8 by dividing by 8 on both sides. So x is less than 5 eighths. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's it. We're done. See you in the next one. Have a great day. Don't forget to like this video and give us a comment and subscribe. Bye-bye.